Looking for a way to get healthy? The Chef You and I program has the answer. Catherine Raker and chefs from around the nation will teach even the most inexperienced how to cook. Come into their kitchen and watch them take ordinary foods with loads of calories and fat and turn those foods into healthier dishes. You will be the first to get tips and ideas on foods that are easy to prepare. Now let's join Catherine and today's chef and learn how to make today's recipes. Hi, this is Katherine Raker, and our chef today is Celeste Fuller, and she is probably one of my best new friends. Yes. She is a patient consultant with Next Stage, yes. hemodialysis and Next Stage dialysis, and also he has been a dialysis patient. So what we're doing, the next couple of shows that we're doing actually are on what a dialysis patient should be eating. And this is for Thanksgiving. So it's a very special meal, right? Exactly. Extremely wonderful meal. And the first thing that we're making is what? A rustic a apple? We're gonna make a rustic apple cinnamon phyllo dough pastry. Yeah, so it's almost like a little pie or a muffin exactly. that we're gonna do, and we're gonna do it in that muffin tin. So can you tell us what the ingredients are um, so that we can start working on this? Because we got a lot to do tonight. Oh yes, we do. Go ahead. Um, the ingredients include an apple mixture, uh -huh. meaning that you can use four apples that are Granny Smith or Gala apples, any apple that you really right. like. And I'm chopping those apples up right now. And what we're going to do first is we're going to saute those in some butter. Ooh, that sounds for good. For about six to eight minutes. All right. This is a really easy recipe. Right. The benefit is that you won't have those after holiday blues with your uh, right. dietitian. Uh, you'll be able to still be in compliance and enjoy the meal with your family. So what are the things that we have to watch for if, as a dialysis patient? Not a lot of phosphorus, right? Well, that's primarily the one of the culprits of holiday season really? is phosphorus. Really? And the other, of course, would be sodium. Okay, so High what sodium. we're going to do this is we're going to put this butter in. And that's a quarter of a cup. And what we right? did is we used unsalted butter. Unsalted butter, that's what we did. And we're going to put this in, all of it, actually. Yes. That's four apples four of your choice. Four apples of your choice that we did, already cut up. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get nice and soft. Nice and soft and caramely. Caramely, yes. right. So, just one more here. It should satisfy that sweet taste without getting you in trouble. Right. So what we need to do is put the top on, right? Exactly. What? Right here, we're going to do this. All right. And that looks really good. Okay, so just give me the top. Yes. Okay. We'll put the top on it. Absolutely. And now what are we going to do next? Tell well, me what, the, what's next. The next step that we're going to do mm -hmm. is um, we're going to get ready to pre pre prepare to make what we will add to the apples. Right. And that's going to include cinnamon, nutmeg, and brown sugar. Okay, so how much, how much do I need of the cinnamon? Okay, we need one, one teaspoon. One excuse teaspoon? Me, one teaspoon of cinnamon. Which is right here. Mm -hmm. One teaspoon. We need a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. I love nutmeg, oh don't you? So it just, good. It just speaks of the holiday season. Yeah, I smells. love it. I love it. Just luscious. When I'm making my wreaths, I'm always doing something in the oven, so it smells oh, good. It smells okay, so good. Okay, then what? And the last thing that we're going to add is some um, brown sugar. Which we've already pre-measured right here. And how much it's is this? It's a quarter cup. That's a quarter cup. All right, so we need to mix and we're that. we just mix that together. Right easily and kind of just set it aside uh -huh. because once again our apples are sauteing in the butter for right. six to eight minutes right and then we'll add our mixture for uh -huh. three to four additional minutes oh okay that'll be really good those will be really sweet but Absolutely. not so sweet that it's not doing harm to you right exactly exactly I, I noticed that on the dialysis diet the diabetics can do it too yes yes you know it's about moderation, uh -huh. um, and, and because we are so individual, 
Um, We're gonna put it's that aside. about doing those things, you uh -huh. working with your dietitian right. to stay in compliance. Right. It just pays. Um, I my my nightmare used to be ham because of the really? high sodium oh, and wow. the high phosphorus. Really? And so it would take days and days to get uh -huh. the fluid off right. when I was on dialysis. So I just don't do ham as much yeah. anymore. Well, ham, you know, my husband loves ham, but it does have a lot of sodium it in it. Very, Even if it's light in sodium. Yes. Okay, so now what else do you want me to do? Okay, in the next step, what we need to do is in a small cup, we're mm -hmm. going to mix cornstarch and vanilla. Well, I've already got the cup. Okay. And I need to do a quarter of a you, thing What you're going to do is you're going to do a uh, quarter teaspoon mm -hmm. of cornstarch. See, mixed there with it is. The, exactly. That's and not very much. just give that a little whisk, and okay. there you go. It's just going to act as our thickener. Right, which will be really good. I use cornstarch in a lot of stuff that I do. Yes, yes. Okay. So we got that done. Okay. Now what? A lot of it is going to be just kind of waiting from here. Uh -huh. We're waiting for our six to eight minutes. What, we're, what are, are we, we doing with now? this then? Okay, then what we're going to do with this, this is actually um, our Some, powdered sugar. Our powdered sugar. That we're going to use with our pastry. Okay. The pastry dough. Okay. And what we're going to do first is we're going to baste it with some melted butter. Uh-huh. And then we're going to then uh, uh, dust it. With, dust it with, with uh, powdered, powdered sugar? Powdered sugar and cinnamon. Oh, that sounds like fun. That's it. Okay, so I'll clear this off for that or whatever you're going to do right there, right? Right, exactly. Because I don't think I need any of this stuff anymore. Right. And we need to move the bag well out for a minute. Yes. You don't need that. We don't need this any longer. Sure I don't. don't. Think. Here's the top. We Here's the top for it. Here's the and vanilla. so you don't have to sit in dialysis centers anymore, do you? No, I was really fortunate to get a uh, transplant yeah. on June the 3rd of this, this year. year. Right. So I am just excited with that oh, but yeah. i'll tell you i was on next stage home hemodialysis for about six years so most of these diets i'm already used to and i'll tell you i have learned that compliance is not that difficult really it really isn't that difficult and that's what we're teaching people exactly. right is to be compliant exactly so that's important to know compliance actually um will translate into choice yeah. It's a lot easier to make your choices and modality when you have been more compliant. Okay. okay. So what we could be doing is those, right? Yes. What we need to do with these, this is our phyllo dough. Mm -hmm. Phyllo dough. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to use a pastry brush. And yes. we, I'm going to wipe this off for a minute. And, you know, um, I really, really, we've had a lot of fun together in the last couple of weeks. Oh, yes. Since you were on our show about your life story right yes so i love working with phyllo dough it's so much fun oh my gosh actually it's so dry so th the idea is to get it done really quick exactly so um do you want me to help you do this yes if you don't mind okay i don't mind okay well what we're going to do is we're right. going to separate the sheets there's right. six sheets right and what we're going to do is we're going to baste it with the, uh, the butter butter and then it goes the directly front in there, uh, correct? Front in the back. And what we've already done with our pan is we've just lightly gre greased it. We used a Pam mm -hmm. uh, spray mm -hmm. to just lightly grease it so that they'll pop right out. Okay, so then can me a couple sheets and I'll okay. do it. Because you got two of them over there, right? You got yes, another one. All right, so let's do, do this. So where's the other pastry brush? I just slipped it right you did? here. Okay. All right, and so if you want to share it with me, we yes, can do that. Yes, I do. So what we're going to do is just go like this yep. easily. Yep, nothing and big. It's just like painting, Exactly. Right? And you're a painter. Yes, I am. And I really enjoy painting. Tell me what you do for fun. You do. Well, I'll tell you, um, having been on dialysis for the length of time that I have been, mm -hmm. um, I am a crafter. And, yeah. and it's just easier to say I'm a crafter because if I can learn it, I'll do anything. Now you turn these over. Yes, right? turn it over and do the other side. Right. Okay, let's move. My latest venture is um, furniture what? painting. Furniture painting? Yes. Oh, I need a lot of furniture painting done. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, we have stuff upstairs 
that you have to be really careful with these because they tear so easily. Yes, they do. You know, and I, I make baklava all the time. Oh, oh I love it. Oh. And even if it does tear on this, don't worry about it because guess what? It's going to be, gonna be put together. in that little thing. So how many do you put in there at one time? Six. Six in one well, little thing? what we're going to do is we're going to cut it into smaller pieces. Okay. And is that the first right thing we're in. doing? That's going to be the first thing that we're doing. So we, need we are just going need to um, cut it with a knife or scissors. Start sheet, brush each side with melted butter. And then what we do is we dust it with the... Oh, dust it with... Um, our brown sugar and our okay. cinnamon. So we um, need actually to take a little short break. We're back, and I'm doing the last sheet with the dusting, okay? And then we're going to cut it. Would you cut it for me? Yes. Into six different pieces. And then it's going to go into the muffin tin, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. All we've done is we've, on both sides, we've basted, the, uh, or I'm sorry. Right. Basted the dough. Right. With butter. Right. And then uh, sprinkled. A mixture of the powdered sugar right. and the uh, yeah. So what you want to do next is you're going to take this and put it here. But I think you need to move this other phyllo. Oh so roll that back up, and you can use the phyllo. We'll put it in the refrigerator, and we'll wrap it up. Okay. So then do this, mm -hmm. and then do you want me to get a spatula? No, you don't need one. I don't think we need one. Okay. We're so now what are you going to do? And what we're going to do is we're going to lay it. Just right into the center, our, the like center that. of our muffin pan. Right, just like that. And then we're going to add the apples. Yes. To that, the and then we'll bake it in the oven at three hundred and seventy-five degrees. Yes. Correct. Yep. What we're going to do is we're going to add, make sure that the cinnamon is nice and. Um, Here you go. On your apples. Okay. Here. Thank you. Here you go. I mean, some of, we put seven on here, so in case anything would happen, we would yes. have it. And plus, we like it nice and flaky. Yeah, we do want it <laughs> flaky. Lots of flake. Lots of flake. Right. And this is easy. You could do this with your children or grandchildren. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off for a minute and put it back here so I can add the other... Uh, wonderful things that we're going to add to it, which is um, the brown sugar mix. Yes. All right. You want to do that? That's going to be really good. Nice and, and hot. Tasty. Nice and hot. And hold on. I want to move this a minute. Hold on. And I there we go like that because then. It's got the butter. And what? where's the other butter? You've got, do we have other butter to put in here or not? No, no there's no more butter needed, okay. which is a really great thing. Cut right. down on your fat. That's right. Keep you from having problems with the cholesterol. All right. And this is ready to go, actually. Do you want to give it to me and I'll just spoon it in? Yes. Whoops. That's good. Get a little bit more there. Right? Yes. That looks really delicious. And it smells even better. Mm. I don't know. I think I'd have, want to put some ice cream or something. I was thinking some golden raisins. Oh, that sounds good. Here. I'll add some more there in a minute. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we got enough. Right? Yeah. There's some here. And this is really, this, uh, all of these recipes will be up on the, they're on the Next Stage site, right? Yes. But they're also on the Catherine Raker site, too, uh, which is the Chef you and I. And I'll eat a little bit more there. Which one? And Here? One of, one of the things that we've tried to do is to choose recipes that are not only tasty, but easy for us to prepare right. after a dialysis treatment or in uh, preparation uh, before you know you'd have to go to dialysis because a lot of times during the holiday our schedules may not change but we still want to participate in the activities with our families and so recipes that we can do that are quick and easy there you and go. also healthy 
are right. great for us. And then we can put these in the oven and we'll be right back on the Chef Hugh and I with myself, Catherine Raker, and Celeste Fuller of Next Stage Patient Advocate and Consultant. We'll be right back. We're back now and on the Chef You and I with Catherine Raker and Celeste Fuller. And actually, we wanted you to see these beautiful, wonderful, um, they are phyllo dough. The rustic apple phyllo dough. Cinnamon. Cinnamon apples. Yes. And so we're going to do the uh, rub for this. So you're going to use actually uh, a cup of... Oh, and look at how big those are. I know. They're huge. I know. They're huge. They're and, huge. And believe it or not, it is one turkey wing right. per person, including the dialysis patients. Right. So you'll be able to eat right along with your family. Many people don't like the other cuts, but this is easy. It's Simple. easy, and you can cut it apart and get a lot of meat out Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. So I need you to okay. tell me what we're going to do. So we're what use we've already done is we've we've washed the wings off, and we patted them dry, right. pierced them with a fork so that the marinade will right. penetrate. We'll go into it. We're going to rub them liberally with the, sh with the rub that you have right. made. So I'm making it with one cup of brown, dark brown sugar. That's right. Okay. And the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to add a teaspoon of black pepper. All right. So what I do when I do things like this is I put a little bit of extra in here, and then I measure it into it. Absolutely. So there's a lot of spices in this, so <coughs> be careful. And then we have already pre-measured the red, red pepper, pepper flakes. flakes. It and takes then one paprika. teaspoon of red, red pepper flakes. It takes uh, one teaspoon of smoked paprika. And if you've never used smoked paprika, it's oh. really good stuff. Oh, it smells so good. It is good. So one teaspoon. Okay, then what? The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use some onion, chopped onion. Flakes. Tried, dried chopped onions. And how much? And what we're going to do is we're going to use two teaspoons two of that teaspoons. as well. And that's really not much. Two no, teaspoons. it isn't. Actually. Now, the recipe also does call for garlic, but anybody that knows Catherine knows that Catherine does not do garlic. So I we always not do go garlic. over that. Okay. I myself love garlic. Do you want garlic in this? No. Okay. All right. So that now what? The next thing that we're going to do is do two teaspoons of the dark chili powder. Oh, it's right here. Yes. So there's a lot of spices in here. What? Yes. And all of those flavors really help. Really help. People that are definitely, you know, that have dialysis because sometimes they don't get to taste things like... We do. And sometimes. if you notice, we didn't put any salt in here at all. No salt. But listen, when you put all these spices in, you won't miss a spot. You won't miss a salt. Not at all. Right. So we're going to mix this together. Mix that all together. Right. And the last thing that we're going to do is we have a low sodium um, barbecue sauce. And what we're going to do is we're going to use two tablespoons per, per wing. So we have, so four, since we have wings. four wings, we're going to do eight tablespoons. Right. So um, the, the entire recipe can be altered depending right. on that, depending on how many people you plan to serve. Oops, sorry about that. One. Yes. That was kind of messy. Two. Happens. Three. How much? How much? Eight. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight. Absolutely. That's good. Yes. Right? And Oops. we're going to mix that together. Right. And then kind of reserve a little bit so that right. you can baste them later on as they're baking. Right. That's really good. And it's easy to do. And um, actually, we've tried this recipe before, right? And I'm going to wipe this off with this. Hold on. Okay. Great. And it looks almost like chocolate cake when you're making it. It's Absolutely. really cute. Absolutely. But it did is we put the so aromatic. Yeah, we did. It is so aromatic. It is. Um, the barbecue sauce on here is 
unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually put the rub on the wings. Absolutely. And we're going to take a little short break here for a second because what we're going to do is we're going to put some aluminum foil down. Yes. And we're going to put the wings, we're going to actually baste the wings and put them into the pan, right? Yep. Exactly. Okay, let's do that. We're back and we're now basting our turkey wings with the with the rub and barbecue sauce that we came. And so we want you to see this, so let's do it. All right, just put them on there really good. You wanna get it on there nice because they become a nice pretty color in the end, right? Yes, and if you notice, all we did was we just rinsed the right. turkey wi uh, wings off, right. and the seasoning is just the rub, no salt, pepper, right. or anything else right. added. And it's kind of, it's kind of like very fluidy. It's not like a rub like that you're used to. A dry, a rub. dry rub. This is a wet rub. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this over, and do it on both sides. And, and then you want the first half an hour that you bake these. And you know what, I, seriously, when they're this big, I would say give it 40 minutes. Yeah. What do you think? I, I think so. Um, amazingly, it is done at that time, but if you like your skin to be just a teeny bit crispier, yes, you could give it a few more minutes. Yeah, a few more minutes. All right, so I think what we can do now is put this one um, and onto the, well, wait a minute. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over. Get that out of the way. Sometimes I kind Yeah, of it's really amazing what they turn out like. They're really beautiful when they, when they come out of the oven. We've done this before, so. I'm going to just lay my first one right on the baking sheet. Okay. We'll rearrange them afterwards to make them all fit. Right. Okay, so we need to take and put this one on. You do yours first, and then we'll okay. move it over and put it in there. I guess I like to baste generously because it's the sweet, the sauce right. is so sweet and savory. Yeah. It's just so good. I know it's good. And a lot of people love wings. I love chicken wings. Um, I'm just, as you know, I'm not a real turkey girl. So that's not one of my favorite things in the world, but that's I, fine. I know. I love it. I know you love it. So that's why we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's just a real traditional kind of uh, thing. thing and, and easy for me as a patient. I was a patient and a mom and you know, like to have my family over, it was always easiest for me because yeah. I could be tired if I had to be. Yeah, but you could do it easily. <laughs> right, I could do it easily. I and could actually, even do it the day before. We have a thing like here, watch. I forgot all about it. There we go. So, and then all you have to do is, wait a minute, go like that mm -hmm. and then bring it over. Yes. Like that, right? Yes. And then if you could move them down a little, we need to move this down, okay, like that, all right, yep. move this one over a little, yep. and then let's move this over here, okay, all right, and now we're going to, we're going to put this into a 400 degree, no, 350 degree oven, but we're going to put it, before we do that, we're going to cover it, and, uh, excuse me, what we're going to do is cover it and kind of make a pouch out of it so that it can steam as it cooks, which will make the meat much more tender. And let's turn this around. And no muss, no, no fuss. fuss. It's done. <laughs> it's right? done. So we'll put that in the oven and we'll be right back. We're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back after that on Catherine Rakers. Let's on Katherine Rakers, the chef, you and I. We're back on the chef, you and I, with Celeste and Catherine. And what we're doing is we're making the 
actual topping that goes onto our pork. So it's what? Um, we are making our topping, which is an actual glaze. A glaze. And it's a marmalade glaze. Right. And we're making it primarily because some people don't care for turkey. Just That's something right. a little like twist. Like Catherine. On yes, uh -huh. like Catherine. Right. Some people don't really care for that. So what we're doing is we're making what they call a cherry marmalade glaze. glaze. Okay, so what do I need first, girl? The first thing that you're going to need is your orange marmalade. Okay, We've so it's right here. It it's right here. That's right. We have a half a cup. And we've already pre-measured everything to make it easy. And this is sugar-free Yes. orange marmalade. Yes. Then what? The next step is we have a quarter cup of apple juice. Which we've already done here. Okay. Then to that, we're going to add some dried cherries. Which you can get at the store very easily, right? That's right. And they're delicious. And we by have the way. an eighth of both nutmeg and cinnamon. An eighth? An eighth of a teaspoon of both nutmeg and cinnamon. Uh huh. Just a tad. Mm -hmm. Just a tad. That's right. Oh, I can smell that nutmeg. Mm -hmm. Woo! Mm -hmm. All right. I don't need. I don't need pepper, do no, I? No, no, no pepper for this part. All right. Okay. So you're going to mix that together. Just like that. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to cook this on the stove for how long? Oh, you're going to cook it until it's warm and it starts to soften. The cherries will start to soften. Okay. There's no real time because it's something that we're going to use as a glaze later right. on. So we're going to do that right now, right? That's right. Okay, Go so we're going to come over here the to the stove. And I'm going to move those tasty little oh. wonderful pieces. We've done well so far not to taste the pastry. <laughs> right. Hold on. So let's talk about what we're doing here. Well, as we are doing our marmalade glaze, one of the things that we're going to be sure of is that we don't burn it. So it's right. just on a low fire, just right. simmering, just just bubbling just a tad. You don't. You want to stir it though. Yes, you definitely want to stir it, it because there's a lot of sugar in there. Because it will stick to the bottom there. of the pan. Yes. All right. It smells tasty. Oh, it <laughs> is so actually. Good. We had some of this earlier, and it was so delicious. Oh, yes. So what are we going to do next? Uh, you're going to make the stuffing next, or yes. am I going to make the stuffing next? I'll make the stuffing. You make the stuffing. I'm going and to make a stuffing. So we'll just take a little break, and we'll get the stuffing together. And it's right there, so we just need a bowl. Hold on. Okay. Here's your bowl. Thank you. You want to do it right here while I'm... Stirring, you can use mine. Yes, that'll okay, be great. Okay, right there. This is called our apple stuffing. And to it, what we're going to do is we're going to add two tablespoons of canola oil. Since we happen to have some in the pantry, we're going to just measure the end right here. One. And two. Okay, so they can give that to me and I'll take it away from you. Go ahead. What I'm doing is I'm cutting two Hawaiian rolls into cubes, making our stuffing homemade. Um, just cutting it into fours and then fours again. Not going to think too much about it. Really simple Hawaiian rolls. You can get at just about any store and they're tasty all by themselves. So we're limiting ourselves because of the amount of sugar, limiting ourselves to just two, but it's gonna be more than enough for our pork loin. Oh, I will. We're gonna put it right here for you. Thank you. You're welcome. And this is on solo, so I'm not burning it or anything. It's just getting beautiful, actually. So I'm gonna take my cubed Hawaiian rolls mm -hmm. straight into the bowl. Right. The next thing I'm going to do is I have um, a half a cup of Granny Smith apples. Okay. I'm going to just toss them in as well. Okay, I can do that for you. Thank you. Then we have unsalted butter, two tablespoons. Oops, <laughs> that's all right. Things happen. Thanks. And the butter was really soft too on top of it, which makes it really nice. There. Then we have our diced onions, two tablespoons of diced onions. Kay. If you would add those. 
the okay. same two tablespoons of celery. Uh huh. And and then we have some thyme, and this is one tablespoon of thyme. Yeah, we've fresh. already done. We've already done that. We've already. And that's fresh thyme. Yes. And then you're. And then you want to mix those together. Okay. All right, mix those together, and don't you want to put the, um, you know, I've cooked it both ways, with the um, chicken stock already in it, and also adding it a little bit at a time, yeah. depending on how you like your stuffing, right. you may choose to just go ahead and add it all at one time, it leaves it nice and moist, and you're done, or you may decide that you'd want to just saute it a little bit, and just add as you need it so that you, your uh, stuffing can be as dry or moist as you like. I like my stuffing a little drier. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Because um, I think it gets too wet um, when you saute it. I okay. think this could be just as nice doing it this way because okay. it's going to bake for like 45 minutes. 45 so it's, minutes. So yeah. do you want to go ahead and add yeah. the... Yeah, let's okay. add that. Let's do this. Let's this do it. is two cups, two... I think it's two cups. I don't think it's a two half cups. A cup half a cup of chicken stock. Right. So low sodium. And if you wanted to, you could even add more of your bread to it if you wanted to, to not have it be so juicy. Yes. Right? So. But what we're going to do is we're going to saute that, and okay. that's going to brown it up some. Yeah. And, and we'll prepare our meat to okay. receive the stuffing. We'll do that, and we'll be right back. After these messages, I'm Catherine Rakers, the chef you and I. We're back on the chef you and I, and Celeste, we've already done the um, stuffing. Right. It's ready to be put into the pork. So if you could go ahead and do that first. Okay. What I've done is we, our pork loin came with two pieces, pieces of pork. And yours will probably come the same. So what we've done is we've split it down, one piece down the middle, and we're just going to lay the dressing directly into the cavity that we've created. And if there's extra, you can put it around the pan itself. Absolutely. You, it never goes to waste. Never goes to waste. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put it into, you can either use regular twine or I had the butcher cut this for me and it'll go right into your oven, which is really fun. All right. So what you have to do is you have to have one person. Actually, this, this is a definite two person job. It really is. <laughs> okay. Get it started. I got to get it started. You got to get it on the bottom. Okay. And then you guide it. Whoops. And then I have to help her here as we do this. Can you pull it up a little? Yes. Okay. You have to guide it. All right. We're getting there. Yes. Okay. It's a messy job. Well, it's kind of messy. But the thing is, is that all of the dressing. Oh, yeah. All of the dressing right. that it's gonna falls off, we'll go. we can try to push into the center, back All into right. the center. It's not a neat job, but it's a delicious job. Okay, I'm getting it. It's coming. Watch it. There we go. Yeah, and then we can use that extra. We can do that extra, right? Yeah. On <coughs> the end of it, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you have enough? Here. You can use just a teeny bit more. All right. As I push or it. Or you can use the twine. Okay, is that enough now? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then you're just going to fold this over, right? Yeah. Got it? Got it. Okay. So then you want to take it and put it into a dish like that, right? And then what you could do is you could take this and put it right there. It won't hurt it, right? Not like that. Bit. Okay, and then we're going to put it into a 400-degree oven. 
Yes. And we're going to, you wanted to, you want to put your thermometer in and you wanted to come up to 160 degrees and then you know that your pork is done, but you don't want it overdone either. All right. right. We're going to take a little break so that we can clean up a little so we can go on to our next recipe. We'll be right back. We're back on the chef, you and I, and we're making an orzo, right? Lemon orzo spring salad. That's what it's called. So we've already made, pre-made the orzo. Yes. So what we're going to do, and we've already cut up all of our vegetables to make it easy for all of you. So, and we've measured them. She's going to give you the ingredients. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two tablespoons of olive oil, correct? That's right. And I am going to saute the vegetables that you're going to hand me. Okay. Okay. And I need this right here. And we're going to heat this up. This is three quarters of a cup of orzo already ready to go. So the only thing that we're going to need to do is to saute our peppers. I've already cut the green peppers and the green peppers are one quarter cup of fresh green peppers. All right. Thank you. And I love these little baggies. It makes it so easy when you want to pre, you know, chop up your prepare ahead of time, prepare ahead of time. That's one quarter cup of yellow peppers. Great. This is really colorful, actually. One quarter cup of red peppers. Okay. And what else? We have one half a cup of onions. Oh, yeah. Chopped. And that's about, that's a sweet onion, by the way. Yes. You can use red or you can use the Vidalia. Right. Sweet. It's up to you. Okay. And you just want to get this tender enough. You want to get a little, what's that right there? I have some zucchini. Oh, there. you got to put that zucchini yes, in there, girl. Yes, it's two cups. Two cups of, of zucchini. Zucchini. And I think we can get a picture with our camera here in a minute. Yes. So you can see how beautiful this is. Well, we'll show it in just a minute. Because you're not going to cook this very long. No, you just... You want to get it all dente. Them? Absolutely. Yeah. Just letting the flavors come alive. Right. Just wilting them just a teeny bit. Right. And so what you're going to do now is you're going to put together the... Um, Parmesan cheese. Yes, I am. And the lemon juice, I think, you've got. Yes. Right? What I'm going to do next is going to be part of the same dish, but it's just the second step. And what I've done is I have one cup of the lemon juice. Well, three tablespoons to be exact. It might be just a teeny bit more because we did use fresh lemons. My suggestion is to always use as fresh as you can. Don't forget the lemon zest. I promise. I, yeah, I have it. You got it? This is our lemon zest. We're going to go ahead and add our quarter cup, quarter teaspoon of our lemon zest. Well, that looks good. Can you smell it? Mm -hmm. Doesn't it smell good? It smells great. And lastly, we're going to add three tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. This smells so good. I just need... Here, just use a regular tablespoon. Not it only. won't hurt. It's a tablespoon. Yeah. Goes right all in the bowl. This is just about done. I can smell that it's almost done. Oh my goodness. The next thing that I'm going to add is some thyme. We're using fresh thyme. And what we're doing, I'm sorry, fresh rosemary. And what we're doing is we're using two tablespoons of fresh rosemary. And rosemary is beautiful. Smell that. I love oh, so oh. good. Love, love rosemary. And that's one of the things about this salad, the freshness, the different flavors all blending together are perfect for a dialysis diet. You'll taste it. Your taste buds will, will just enjoy that. Well, um, we've turned and it And you'll off. still be compliant. 
So we've turned the sauteed materials yes. off. Right. Okay. What we've done is we've added all of the ingredients. I've added also a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I'm adding half a teaspoon of fresh oregano. And I'm adding another half a teaspoon of the black pepper, just straight black pepper. We're Good. doing a little estimating. We like it spicy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and after that, this salad is so simple yeah. that what you're going to do now is go ahead and add your uh, sauteed vegetables. All the sauteed vegetables right here, all into okay. one bowl. In one bowl. This is so simple. I've never seen such a simple salad. This is great. And then okay. the three quarter cups of orzo, already. which we pre done ahead of time. And that's what it looks Stir like. Stir that together. Stir that together really well. And you're going to actually refrigerate this. Yes. That's the cool part. Nice summer salad, yeah. nice side actually, dish. Actually, it's a nice salad anytime, it's actually. It's fresh and beautiful and has just a teeny bit of a kick. Yeah. Go ahead now. Now you're going to add all the lovely ingredients. This is the lemon juice, Oops. the lemon zest, yeah. the thyme. And that all goes pepper. together. And then how beautiful is that? That is beautiful. And then you refrigerate <sighs> that in your refrigerator, right? And then what we're going to do uh, to make it simple is we are going to actually put it into the serving bowl and put it in the refrigerator so that when, hold on, when we um, actually serve it, it's all ready to go, right? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Here we go. That looks so good. All right. And I absolutely loved it. I, I wouldn't pour it all. I just wait. Yeah. I'm pouring some of the. I'm not pouring. Yeah. Just okay. Pouring. Let me hear. I've got it. I love these kind of salads because they have just a little bit. Orzo is so beautiful. I love it. It's so tasty. And it's I love so rosemary. dialysis friendly. It is dialysis oh. friendly. Everything we <laughs> had today is dialysis friendly. I love it. I right. love it. Right. I know that my brother would have loved this dish. He would have loved it. And look how beautiful it is. It's so gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Well, we want, to, we want you to see that, how pretty that is. And we're going to be serving that with the turkey wings, which yes. are almost done. And the pork loin, which is almost done. We have our beautiful, I want to show, you want to show that, um, what we're going to put on the pork loin? As your pork loin is finished, what we're going to do is we're going to just apply this glaze gently over the whole top of your pork loin, along the sides, and then put it back in the oven for just per maybe another six to eight minutes, just long enough for it to caramelize. It will make such a difference in your pork loin. It really will. And, you know, we have these beautiful dessert that we're going to have with maybe just a tiny bit of ice cream. Oh, just a tad. Oh, just a tad. <laughs> we want to thank everyone, um, for helping us, especially the Next Stage chef. Oh, yes. Who created all of these wonderful recipes for Next Stage and dialysis uh, uh, patients. And, you know, we'll have a wonderful Thanksgiving dinner, but we want to give Next Stage's website. Yes. So that's www.nextstage, that's N X capital S T A G E dot com. And the recipes are up there as well. But the recipes will also be up on the Chef You and I. Yes. So check that out. And when we come back, we'll be having dinner in the dining room. Yes. With turkey wings and wonderful uh, pork, loin pork loin with that great glaze on it. Oh, my goodness. So good. And, uh, you know, I made some, I made some biscuits. But we didn't have time tonight to make them on the air, but you'll be able to see the biscuits and I'll have the recipe. Yes. Right. We must share that. We have it we must share that. And what a wonderful, wonderful meal. Thank yes. you. Enjoy it. I really had a great time and but I we love still, to we, be able to show that we can we can do things as a as your as a dialysis patient or for dialysis patients that you're doing. So we'll be right back right after these important messages. We're back on 
I'm the chef you and I with my favorite new chef, Celeste Fuller, who is not only a patient consultant, yes. but a next stage patient, patient advocate. advocate as well. And she was on hemodialysis and dialysis for many years. And her sweet husband, they're like newlyweds basically, <laughs> right? Yeah, Tony. Yeah. And we made a meal uh, that is so beautiful. The turkey wings, Tony, are un I've never seen turkey wings quite like this before, right? Right. Right. They're different. They're different. They're different. And um, you want to show the orzo, uh, oh, and yes. those are vegetables. It's a medley of vegetables with orzo. Yes. Then we have the herb biscuits. And what we've done that's a little different for this show is that we've done a pork, right, yes. with stuffed apple stuffing. Yes. And so you wouldn't necessarily eat the turkey and the pork, you know, but there's a lot of people that don't oh like turkey, God. right? Right. Absolutely. right, absolutely. Just change it up a little bit. Change it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have dessert in just a little while, but uh, we'll show how we made the dessert. But we're at the end of our show, and this is our Thanksgiving meal. Uh, and I'm so happy to be here with you. Oh, thank you. And you want to say a little grace? Yes. Because part of Thanksgiving is the grace part, right? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for uh, our health and our strength. Yes, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to gather together with friends and enjoy our dialysis-friendly meal um, and be able to share with others that it's possible to still stay included with your family um, and enjoy the meal and enjoy the holidays. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity. Amen. 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 And we hope that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank this is a next stage dialysis meal. Yes. And it's going to keep you healthy and happy. And we want to say bon appetit, all of you, bon and happy appetit. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. And we'll see you next time on The Chef You and I. Thanks for joining us on The Chef You and I show today. We'll be back next week with another great and healthy recipe. Don't forget to visit our website, thechefyouandi.com, for all of our featured recipes, cooking tips, and clips of the show.